Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Hope y'all doing well. So, my friend Boo actually wrote me uh, requesting that I do a video <clears throat> on this topic, and I thought it was really interesting, so I'm going to do that tonight. She gave me eight different situations and asked that I pick the perfect scent for each. And since that time, I actually added two myself so I could bring it to an even ten. Um, and I'm going to try to, to pick the scent that I would wear for each different occasion. So they are, number one, out by yourself. Uh, number two, what scent would I wear out with friends? Uh, number three, out with family. Number four, out on a date. Number five, to work. Um, number six, to a wedding. Number seven, to a funeral. And number eight, to a naked turkey shooting contest. <laughs> so those are the ones that she gave me. And to make it an even 10, I added uh, what scent would I wear for a holiday dinner? And number 10, what scent would I wear for a trip abroad? So, tonight, a the perfect scent for each of 10 occasions. Okay, so what scent would I wear out by myself. So this would be one that is very personal to me. Um, one that I love, that I'm wearing to enjoy myself, um, not uh, really for the enjoyment of others or to try to make a statement. It's something that I am passionate about myself um, and almost like my own secret that I just want to keep to me. Um, you know how when something is so good you want to kind of like keep it a secret to yourself and not tell others and that's the way I feel about this fragrance. So this is the one that I would wear <clears throat> out by myself and I'm going to be end up smelling horrible by the time this video is over because I actually have to spray myself with everything before I talk about it. So we're talking 10 fragrances I'm going to be spraying on my arm uh, this evening. I might not get through the whole video tonight so you might see a change of clothes <laughs> because I might have to continue this into the next evening. Um, because I'm going to be talking a lot and spraying a lot of stuff. But Out By Myself has to be the absolute, wonderful, classic, beautiful Bois de Ajon by Christian Dior Paris. Um, it is in the collection, Collection Privé, formerly uh, the Collection Couturier. There's nothing like it in my collection. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Um, Anique Minarda Fragrance, collaboration with Heidi Sleman, Juniper, Cypress, a cold, powdery, gorgeous, ethereal iris, um, vanilla, musk, amber, honey, leather. It's like, and I've said this before, smelling a cloud. It would be in the perfect world what a cloud would smell like. It's ethereal. Um, puffy, transcendent, but not necessarily for others. It's something for yourself. It, it creates a beautiful cloud of fragrance around you, but it's not in your face or bold. It's um, elegant and ever-changing. Um, so it starts out with that hint of iris and it morphs sometimes into a vanilla like scent sometimes into a light tobacco scent sometimes into a honey leather scent it just depends upon the time that you're wearing it and how the top heart and base develop it is an absolute joy uh, for me to wear and it's one of the most unique fragrances that I've ever smelled and that is my own personal secret <laughs> fragrance that I wear just for me. So, Bois de Argent, uh, Christian Dior Paris. Okay, out with friends. So, I don't know about your friends, but when I'm out with my friends, we're a complete flippin' mess. <laughs> so, it's just a jumbled up fun um, mess when we go out. Uh, we do stupid crap and um, just have a great time and act stupid. Uh, so what fragrance to me 
<laughs> captures that. Uh, Ood One by um, Martine Mikheyev. I love her bottles. Look at this. Look how it sparkles in the light. It's just amazing. Um, so again, another, this is a hard to get fragrance. Only available um, perfumeries Bruckner in uh, Germany. And this is by um, Martine Mikheyev. She just does stunning, incredible uh, presentations in her bottles. Uh, fragrances are unbelievable. I think she has one called Gayak that I love. Her vanillas are amazing, um, according to some of my friends. But um, this one is, it's a jumble of, it sounds like a jumbled mess from the notes, and that's what it's like going out with my friends. <laughs> a big jumbled mess. But for some reason it comes together, and it's a blast. Um, and when I go out with my friends, everything kind of is cohesive and it's a blast, but yet it's a jumbled up mess. And that's what I feel about this fragrance. It's apple, saffron, which I totally get right off the bat. And who would think of that with apple and, and peach? And it's got peach and plum, um, some orange blossom in it, uh, sandalwood, vanilla, and then of all things, oud. So, you know, you think of oud as being very animalic, and, but here you've got all of these like lighter, fun, happy notes in with it, like apple and peach, and that's what I mean by jumbled up. It, it's a beautiful fragrance, but you would never think um, that with the note breakdown that it would smell good at all. It smells like something you would throw in the garbage disposal, <laughs> but I love it. it. It just smells amazing. It's fruity, um, a little bit spicy with the saffron, and you get the oud accord uh, with it also. So I just think it's a blast. It makes me smile to smell it um, because it's that much fun and it's light and lively um, and just funny. It just cracks me up that something with such weird notes smells so good and, and Mikheyev's a genius um, in my book. I love her fragrances. Love her bottles, you know, I'm a bottle freak, so she makes the most beautiful, stunning bottles. And this one actually appears to be hand-painted where it says Oud One. The box is just as gorgeous, um, so that would be um, my fragrance that I would wear out with friends. And it looks like disco time anyway, because look at that bottle sparkling. So, Oud One, Martine Mikia. <music>Okay, so out with family. Um, when I go out with my family, my mom is usually included, and I'll tell you a little story. She was an Avon lady in the 70s. So I'd go out on her Avon route with her, help her pack the bags, um, help her deliver the stuff, and she'd carry around that little blue, green, aqua-colored Avon bag that uh, all the Avon ladies had in the 70s. But she did that for years and years, and afterwards, she was so sick of fragrance that she couldn't stand it. Um, so, and still can't to this day, uh, believe it or not. Um, so when I go out, and she's, uh, included, I have to go for something very light that's not cloying, um, that's not going to be in your face, or, um, that I'm not going to gas her out with my fragrance cloud. So my choice for out with family would be, uh, the stunning Creed Jardin del Malfi. Um, it is just an incredibly beautiful, uh, lighter fragrance. Uh, and it's a tangerine, bergamot, pink berry, apple, cedar, Haitian vetiver, musk, cinnamon, a touch of rose. Um, from first spray, it's light, um, so it would be a perfect scent for spring, summer. I think year-round, but in particular spring and summer. Um, it's just a beautiful, light, floral, citrus fragrance. Um, you get, actually, um, when you spray it, you get just a touch of rose, and that's that beautiful citrus smell in the background, and um, some light fruit accord. Uh, it's like being in a garden um, in the springtime by, it reminds me of by water, uh, by the sea, with um, some citrus uh, trees in the background. Um, 
never cloying. Um, it's always light and beautiful, and there's a very light musk dry down to it. Uh, so I think this would be the fragrance to wear for around people that don't really care for fragrance. Um, clean, light, uh, citrus, uh, light musk, floral base. Um, it's just beautiful. And like I said, you're never going to spray too much and um, drive somebody off with it. So this is the fragrance actually that I go to um, when I go out with family. Okay, um, for a date, which fragrance? I had several uh, that I narrowed this uh, down to and had a hard time choosing, but I ended up with one. And that one is Black Afghano uh, Nasamato Parfum Extrait. It is incredible to me. I love this. Love, love, love it. Um, and at first, when I heard about this scent and read about it, I'm like, yeah, it's just hype. Um, but then I got a sample and was blown away and ended up buying uh, the bottle. It's a small bottle and people say it's so expensive for what you're getting for the size of the bottle. Um, but remember it is a Parfum Extrait, one spray and you are good to go. Do not use more than one spray of this or you're going to just blast somebody out. But for a date, to me, incredibly sexy. It's There's notes of coffee. Uh, Oud, tobacco, hash, it's smoky, slightly sweet, slightly sweaty slash dirty, but not in a bad way, if you know what I mean. Um, and it just projects and warms on your skin and turns into this potent, dark, syrupy, beautiful, incensey, oody, hash like, smoky mix. It's dark and um, dangerous smelling and sexy and lovely. There's nothing else like this in my collection. Um, it just knocks me off my feet every time I smell it. Others say they don't see what the big deal is with this. Look at this little tiny bottle. I think it's amazing that something this potent comes out of such a little thing. Um, but it's incredible. The cap fits it well. Um, it's kind of like the show off thing, look at me. <laughs> but it, it's as sexy as uh, the bottle and cap look. It's an incredible, smoky, brilliant, um, dangerous smelling scent. Um, so I think this would be incredibly alluring and attractive on a date. So if you haven't sniffed this out, definitely get a sample. I love, love, love Black Afghano. Okay, to work. Um, so this is the one actually that I wear um, the most to work. <clears throat> and almost every time I wear it, and it's unusual for me to get compliments on fragrance, almost every time I wear it, I get a compliment on it. Um, the last one was, uh, just to smell this makes me so happy, is what uh, my coworker said. So I thought that was cool. Um, and she actually asked that I wear it. Uh, so that is, Creed's Aventus and it is I think this is the universal fragrance it can be worn any place anytime with no problem that's what I love so much about this um, and it is just an incredible beautiful scent at first when I got the sample of it I didn't understand what everybody was talking about I didn't think it was that great um, and I happened to throw it in a drawer and I was searching for something in the drawer and came across it and smelled it a second time and it knocked me on my feet, off my feet the second time. And I've loved it ever since, um, as you can see, because I got the big flacon. Um, but it is a beautiful, uh, smoky pineapple scent. Um, I think it's seasonless. It could be worn any season. Um, yeah, it's it's stunning any season um, for any occasion I could see it being formal casual work uh, play 
that's what's so neat about it is it's completely universal in my opinion. Apple, uh, black currant, bergamot, smoky pineapple, uh, the musk, ambergris, the signature ambergris uh, that comes with all creeds and vanilla. It is just an incredibly beautiful scent. Based on the, the life of Napoleon, um, each note in the fragrance uh, pays tribute to a certain portion of his life. I did do a full review on it, so if you want to know more about the fragrance, check that out. But that is my work scent. Okay, so I told you guys I wouldn't be able to get through all these in one day. It's, we're now into the second day, and I have a funny story. Um... <clears throat> I, I am the type of person that I have to actually spray the fragrance on skin to be able to talk about it at all uh, because it's not the same on me if I spray it on paper, if I spray it in the air, if I smell it from the bottle. It just doesn't work the same way. So each fragrance that I talk about I have to spray on skin. So as you know, um, we're up to I think number six right now. So I had five different fragrances on last night um, before bed and I choked myself out so I had to stop. Plus I got tired. It was late. And um, tried to wash most of them off last night because it was just too much. And then showered this morning. And uh, today, uh, my scent of the day, what I wore to work, uh, was Kier Beluga by Guerlain. Um, put that on, everything's cool. Went to work, um, and about noon, I'm noticing thinking what is that what's that smell like I said keep in mind that I washed everything off last night and um, took the shower like I always do it was black Afghano that was after the shower and washing it off the night before and applying Guerlain today it was still projecting so it's unbelievable. The parfum, the extract from Black Afghan, like I said, the strength is incredible. Okay, so um, on to the next one. I think this is number six we're at now, and that is Perfect Scent for a Wedding. Okay, so on this one, you or me, if you will, <clears throat> the wedding, so I'm going to make up my own wedding scenario. Let's say it's during fall and winter, um, because I think the scent that I would wear would depend upon the season, first of all, uh, for this. And let's say that I'm extremely close to whoever it is that is exchanging vows. <clears throat> Very good friends. So, in my mind, um, this is an extremely important event for two people exchanging vows. Um, and you would want to wear a fragrance um, that honors that. So it would be one of the most important events in, in their life. So you would want to wear the scent of a lifetime, in my opinion, to the actual exchanging of the vows. So I picked one for that. And then let's say I run home um, and change out of a suit into something more casual for the actual reception. It's like dinner and dancing outdoors somewhere more informal. So, for the actual exchanging of the vows, I picked um, Sergio Momo Zerchoff uh, Richwood from the XJ1717 line, The Earth Laughs in Flowers. And gorgeous, incredible bottle with the stone label, the XJ engraved on the back. Um, it's just an incredibly beautiful rich scent. This one again is one of those like um, a lot of the NASA mottos where a little dabble do you. Uh, the quality shows through the longevity and projection on this one. It, it will last into the next day and probably if you didn't shower it would last a day later. Um, it's just incredibly beautiful creamy rich Mysore sandalwood which we know is one of the most scarce and precious ingredients in modern perfumery today. Um, it's just the crowning uh, glory of this fragrance. The Mysore just floats throughout it. Um, there's a halo of like crisp um, citrus right at the top which doesn't last long. A bit of patchouli, um, some beautiful 
dark rose and just a little bit of cassis that it's tinged with and it's a gorgeous masterpiece so like i said scent of a lifetime um and that's what i would actually wear for the exchanging of the vows okay so let's say we are now home uh from the actual ceremony and going for a quick shower and then change into something more casual so um in my mind it's still uh, kind of a formal event but um something a little bit less buttoned up a little more loosened up and um the richwood is such an elegant refined dress up fragrance um <clears throat> i'd want to wear something a little less serious but still uh carrying out that same uh sandalwood uh, patchouli kind of theme um so i don't smell too drastically different but just a little bit lighter um and more fun and i think i just Pick the wrong word in lighter because this fragrance is not light it's rich and elegant and deep but yet it's a little less buttoned up um, a little more gourmand and a little bit more fun in my opinion it's provocative and sensuous but it's still not quite as formal as Richwood and that is um, Krigler's lovely patchouli night number 55 so this is a variation on the classic 55 that was created in 1955 um, by Krigler. Notes of um, bergamot and ambry accord, patchouli, uh, leather, and the addition of sandalwood, which is the difference between um, the classic 55 and the 55 night. It's a beautiful, rich, um, almost to me it's almost gourmandish scent because it's so rich um and beautiful um it's a warm sensuous fragrance patchouli unlike i have ever smelled it's just gorgeous the amber um and the touch of sandalwood really bring it out so um but yet it's a little less buttoned up i think than the richwood so that would be my choice for the actual reception Okay, to a funeral, which scent would I wear? So, for me, nothing. Um, assuming if I'm going to a funeral, I'm going to be upset. When I get upset, it's weird. The things that I normally enjoy, music, eating, cooking, fragrance. When I get upset, some people go in one direction, and they, if they like food, they eat a ton of food when they're upset. When I'm upset... I can't touch food. I can't listen to music. The things that I normally enjoy, I stop enjoying when I'm extremely upset. So, to a funeral, I probably would wear nothing. Um, but, I can tell you the fragrance that to me is reminiscent of a funeral. And that is, and I left the bell jar in the other room, I should have brought it in, but I'm going to actually do a review on this. Uh, coming up because it's fascinating and you know what an iris freak I am um, It's an incredible fragrance. It's Serge Luton Iris silver mist so not created by Christopher Sheldrake like most of them from the house of uh, Serge Luton are from um, Palais Royal Shiseido, but uh, Maurice Roussel and it is cold and stark and haunting and part of it actually reminds me of death um so that's what popped into my mind when i when funeral um the choice for fragrance when when funeral was mentioned it is a cold raw iris it's the iris that's pulled out of a stark barren freezing earth um, and that metallic, cold, carroty, almost yeasty smell. Um, it's got the orris root, cedar, sandalwood, clove, a little bit of musk, benzoin, uh, and some white amber. But it's stark and cold and haunting. Uh, and it's one of the many facets of iris. It, it's a masterpiece. Um, 
and it takes a certain person to wear, as I've said with other Sears Louis Thomas fragrances, it's difficult. It, a lot of his fragrances are an acquired taste. It's kind of like me and martinis. When I first tried them, I hated them. Um, and I started to like them based on nibbling the olives out of them and tasting the booze on the olives, but the straight up martinis. Um, and now I love them. Same thing with this. It's definitely his house, um, with few exceptions. It's a re acquired taste, but once you do uh, start to enjoy them, you really start to enjoy them and appreciate the artistry behind them. But um, just that cold, misty, lonely feeling uh, that Iris Silver Mist conveys, I think would be the funeral fragrance. Okay, so the last one of my friend Boo's original eight was what fragrance would I wear to a naked turkey shooting contest? Now, back several years ago when I used to live um, with the nudist colony uh, that I've told you about, and we would have turkey shooting contests, there was always one scent that I would go to because we would, you know, being nudists, we would always use um, muskets uh, to shoot the turkeys with because, you know, it's easier to shoot turkeys with a musket than it is to try to, like, throw knives at them or bow and arrow or, you know, the typical um, ways that nudists hunt uh, wild animals. So we would use muskets. And the fragrance that I would always wear when I was hunting for turkeys naked <coughs> was spent musket oil. Um, by D.S. and Durga. It's just that smell of musket oil in the morning and nakedness and turkey feathers um, that's just gorgeous. So that is what I always wore um, when I was doing my naked turkey shooting. This is actually a limited release uh, from D.S. and Durga. It came in this uh, burlap sack, um, spent musket oil, uh, there were only 175 of these made of the 50 milliliter bottles. It um, takes its cue from the otherworldly aroma of a Barbary Wars era rifle, which was found in the hold of a packet ship in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So this is actually a collaboration between DS and Durga and Brooklyn Dry Goods, which sponsors pop-up um, sales events of clothing um, throughout the city of New York and they always sprayed fragrance on the tags of what they were selling and um, they partner with DS and Durga to make a fragrance reminiscent of the scent of the tags that they put on um, their merchandise so spent musket oil from DS and Durga so the notes in this one are um, vintage birch wood, uh, spent rifle oil, dried leather hilt warmed by Cavendish tobacco, merchant marine bay rum, and musk. What do I get? It's incredibly smoky, very, very smoky. Um, almost like that uh, smoke that's in Burning Barber Shop by D.S. Andriga, if you're familiar with that. But a deep, deep smoke accord, and then there's some leather, and then oil. It actually smells like rifle oil to me. One of the most unusual scents that I have, um, but it's spicy, smoky, and oily. So perfect for turkey shooting. Okay, so I added these last two just to make it an even 10. Um, what would I wear to a holiday dinner? And by holiday dinner, I'm thinking Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, some wintry type holiday. And I, I am just mad about this one. I love, love, love it. Um, Boys 1920, and it is Boys, not Bois or Bois, um, but Boys 1920, uh, the fabulous Italian fragrance house. Sushi Imperial. 
I'm just crazy about this one. I think it is one of the most lovely holiday smelling fragrances. I don't know where the sushi name came from, um, but it's slightly boozy. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, I just swoon over this one. Citrus, pepper, nutmeg, cinnamon, Madagascan, vanilla. Just beautiful. What it reminds me of is kind of a cross between an apple pie and a spicy cinnamony rum drink. I just love it. It makes me drool and it totally reminds me of Christmas or Thanksgiving. And <clears throat> the difference between this and a lot of the other um, holiday scents is they tend toward um, the Christmas candle like Yankee candle smells. Um, you know, like those red Yankee candle, bayberry Christmas wreath scents, or the real super sweet pine Yankee candle scents, blit. Um, whereas this one just smells like a beautiful holiday cocktail. So that would be my pick for what would I wear to a holiday dinner. <music> trip abroad for number 10 and the final one so you know I'm a traveler um, and when I travel abroad or um, anywhere really I want to smell anywhere overseas I want something that's kind of an exotic um, different smell so what I would pick um, is my actually my signature scent and that would be Amouage Jubilation 25, it's just to me a masterpiece. Um, I don't know if anyone takes any stock on what Luca Turin says. Um, I personally don't, <laughs> but I still enjoy um, reading his opinions, uh, and I've got his book, um, but the, he is a fan of this one. And I can absolutely see why it is just an incredible, um, incense masterpiece it's a deep incense which it starts out bright almost like a fruity liqueur kind of smell um, notes are it's just there's a treasure trove of notes in this labdomum coriander orange divana frankincense blackberry honey bay cinnamon rose orchid clove celery kayak wood immortel ambergris musk um, a fruity liqueur uh, with a wood incense musky base. I just, I love it. I think it's a classic. I'd never be without it, and that's what I would pick for um, my travel scent. So, I'm sorry this was so long. I tried to squeeze 10 in, and it ended up being very long, but I hope you enjoyed it, everyone. Um, so that is my 10 cents for 10 occasions. You guys have a good night. Talk to you soon.